on what it's like. Totally outside the box comparison. 1962 Plymouth Savoy also goes by the name of Max Wedge or Superstock 413 versus 1965 Corvette Stingray, but not just any Stingray, the 327 Fuel Injection Stingray. This episode is what the Beach Boys sang about in Shut Down. Which one is better? Let's find out. But before getting into all of that, I'm Jay. Welcome to What It's Like. This channel, we feature the classics, vintage, some exotics, lots of orphan cars, and cars that are off the beaten path. If that sounds of interest to you, hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell icon to never miss a video. If you like this outside the box comparison, please give us a like so more people can see this video in the future. A little bit of background. So if you're new to the channel, I'm a huge Beach Boys fan and I figured I'll never ever get the opportunity to do this again. These cars were rare when they were back in the 60s. I think they only made 23 real wedge, max wedge cars, Plymouth Savoys and the shutdown song, the fuel injection Stingray takes on a 413. They said in the Wikipedia explaining the song, they said it was a super stock Dodge, but the Dodge goes by Ram Charger. Super stock was given to Plymouth. Maybe they said super stock Dodge because they couldn't sing super stock Plymouth would sound kind of weird. In the comment section below, what are your takes on that? So let's talk specs, starting with the Plymouth Savoy. 202 inches long, 75.6 inches wide, 54 inches tall, rides a wheelbase of 116 inches, weighs 3,185 pounds, price in 1962 was $2,720. It took a lot of digging, but I found out how much the 413 V8 option was, $545, and it could go up to $682. So I added that to the base price, so that brought our car up to $3,402 which is equivalent to you spending $33,375.20 in the year 2022. Moving to the Corvette, 175.2 inches long, 69.6 .6 inches wide, 49.8 inches tall. It rides a wheelbase of 98 inches. Weighs 3,570 pounds. Price, the price of ours is $5,639.65, which is equivalent to you spending $50,026.73 in the year 2022. Looking at these numbers side by side, it is very interesting because the Corvette is smaller than the Savoy in just about every regard. But somehow the Savoy is almost, is it 400 pounds less than the Corvette? It also costs about half as much as the Corvette did. Let's talk engines, not getting into every single engine on offer. We're just gonna talk about the engines that each of these cars have, starting with the Plymouth Savoy. 413 cubic inch displacement, overhead valve, V8. It was available with two different compression ratios. If you got the 11 to one compression ratio, it made 410 horsepower, 460 foot pounds of torque. If you got the other compression ratio, which was 13 and a half to one, made 420 horsepower, 470 foot pounds of torque. Bore of 4.19 inches and a stroke of 3.75 inches. This engine featured cross ram carburetors. This car could go 0 to 60 in 5.3 seconds and do the quarter mile in 13.7 seconds. Moving to the Corvette Stingray. 327 cubic inch displacement, fuel injected, 5.4 liters. It makes 375 brake horsepower at 5,600 RPM, 415 foot-pounds of torque at 3,600 RPM with a bore of 4 inches and a stroke of 3.25 inches. Compression, 11.01 to 1, 5 main bearings, cast iron block. This car could go 0 to 60 in 5.7 seconds and do the quarter mile in 14.2 seconds which according to the numbers, the Savoy will walk all over the Corvette. Those are what those numbers are like on paper, but let's see what these are like in the real world. I've been trying to convince my boss that we need to run both of these down on the bypass at the same time. Maybe first one, the 60 wins. What do you guys think? Is that something that you'd like to see? I think the Savoy will win, but everybody at the shop thinks that the Corvette will win, but the Corvette's heavier and it 
It has less like, horsepower than the Savoy. It would definitely be really interesting, that's for sure. We're gonna start off by talking about styling. So these cars are totally different in the styling department. The Plymouth Savoy over here, it's more of a rectangular shape. A lot of the lines don't take pictures really well, but I'm gonna point some of them out. They're very interesting. Look at this line that starts right here and it works. It comes down over here, but also you have down over here and just look at how this comes out. This starts jutting out. But this part here, it protrudes outward until here and it stops. And then it continues right here, it starts right here and then picks up towards the end. Also coming down here, just look at how this line, how this is all carved out, sculpted out I should say. This car has really nice lines that don't show up on screen. I did a full review of this car. It does look like an ugly duckling. This car design has really grown on me over time. Studebakers get a lot of flack because you can't tell if they're coming or going. This car, the rear back here looks a lot like the front. Can you can you tell? Like this almost looks like a hood ornament. Because we'll come up to the front here real fast and show you what this looks like. See, it looks the same. The only difference is there's headlights up here, not brake lights. And that's how you could just differentiate between the front and the back. Coming over here to the Corvette, Corvette looks like a spaceship. Not saying that the Savoy doesn't look like a spaceship. It looks interesting. I wouldn't say spaceship, but the Corvette looks like a spaceship. There is lots of lines in the Corvette as well. Starting here, almost looks like a torpedo, how it comes up. Then it comes down. Also, be sure to check this out. The spine, it almost looks like the, now this is a bit of an exaggeration, but the Bugatti Atlantique had a spine. Coming back here, cars that copied this design, the Riviera, 1970-73 Boat Tail Riviera has this same shape back here. I see Bugatti Atlantic, especially with the spine. It's a gorgeous car. So I pride this channel on things that other people don't show you. Here's another one. What happens if the car breaks down? How hard is it to push? This car is relatively light. It's super easy to push. It's almost like pushing a Carmen Ghia or a 67 Mustang. As you can see, I'm, I'm barely putting any effort into it at all. I'm just kind of like leaning here and pushing the car and it's moving forward. So we found out the Savoy isn't hard to push at all. It feels like you're pushing a Carmen Ghia. It feels like you're pushing a lot smaller car than it is. What's it like to push the Corvette? I'm gonna do the same thing I did. I'm gonna give it, give it some with my knees and I'm just gonna push it. It's not as easy to push as it was the Savoy. And I don't get that because I've moved a lot of cars working for John Kuflinger. The fiberglass cars are harder to move than the steel cars. Why is that in the comment section below? Coming over here to the Savoy, we're going to get inside. I'm going to show you how easy it is and what it's like. And the other thing is, is the Savoy's got a back seat, whereas the Corvette didn't. So you could haul more people. You could bring more people with you to the race or to go get ice cream or whatever you guys want to do to the cruise. So it's more family friendly, the Savoy is. So opening the door here. That door goes 90 degrees. It opens up a whole lot wider than the Corvette did. So getting inside, 
really easy. You just climb right on in. This is what over the hood impression looks like behind the wheel of the Savoy. This is what behind the wheel of the Savoy looks like. I will say this steering wheel is not circular. It's more of an oval shape, not a true circle. Also, when you're driving this, this steering wheel on the back has these lashes. They're, they're very... And it feels weird driving it because when you're turning the wheel and you feel the lashes, they go in your fingers and it feels weird. It, it's not like a regular steering wheel nub. They're, they actually feel like lashes. So this is what I look like. I got adequate headroom. This is what underneath the steering wheel looks like. There's plenty of room underneath the steering wheel. This car is really comfortable to sit in. Corvette, we just come up to the door here and we open it. You have to remember with the Corvette, this is part of the roof. So it's easier getting in and out of because there's no roof part here because it's part of the door. And it gives you lots of space to get in. Getting in is really quite simple. Just kind of slide in here like that. So here's our gauge cluster situation. This is a very cockpit-like interior design. I absolutely love this wood spoke wheel. It's a three spoke wheel. This is what over the hood looks like. This is what first person would look like. There's lots of room underneath the steering wheel. Like I could move my hand up and down. You're not gonna hit your legs off of it unless you force your legs up like that. That's what the horn sounds like. Here's what the sun visors look like. Here's my hand for reference. They're very thin. They're, they're more on the thin side. Here's a rear view mirror and it's got the daytime nighttime feature. There's nighttime. There's the other sun visor, no courtesy mirrors. The horn sounds like that. Sun visors. Here's what the sun visor situation looks like. Here's my hand for reference. They're very thin. No courtesy mirrors. Same with this one. Very thin. There's my hand for reference. No courtesy mirrors. You do have a rear view mirror though. Very nice rear view mirror. The Savoy has a back seat, so we're going to get in the back seat. To get in the back seat, we just flip the seat forward like that. It would be if I was driving the car. So to make this fair, I'm going to get in the back seat with the seat position, how I would drive it. Right, sitting in the rear seat of the Savoy. There is not a rear seat in the Corvette. So this is already a plus one. There is lots of room back here. I am nice and comfortable. The seat position in the front is where I would have it driving and I have plenty of room back here. I can even sit up a little bit. I'm slouched back here. The head situation, there's probably about an inch, inch and a half of space between the headliner and my hair but my hair is i have poofy hair here is what my knees look like there's easily an inch inch and a half there probably about as much space there as there was for my head but as i as i said i could slouch down a little bit and give myself more headroom and have less knee room or i could sit up and have less headroom and more knee room here is what the profile of the rear seat looks like as you can see it is not straight up and down. It's actually reclined back here a little bit. Also, these windows back here go down. They go all the way down. Don't have that in the Corvette. Another thing with the Savoy is, 
Look at that trunk. That trunk is absolutely massive. You have a storage space in the Corvette, but there's no access to it from the outside. Just to give you an idea of how big this trunk, trunk is, I'm sitting crisscross applesauce in the back of the Plymouth Savoy trunk. I could, I could probably lay down back here comfortably, to be honest. Lots of room back here. All right, so I got in the trunk of the Plymouth Savoy. I'm going to attempt to get into the trunk of the Corvette Stingray. And this might be a total sacrilege thing to do, but I'm gonna do it because I did it in the other car. All right, so I'm sitting in the luggage compartment of the Corvette Stingray and it's not really that comfortable back here. I guess you couldn't put a back seat back here, but if I lay back here like but if I lay back here like this, it's not so bad. I can lay down in the trunk back there comfortably and shut the trunk. I'm laying down in the back back here. It's not very comfortable, but eh, there's, there's enough room to do it. You'll get baked by the sun with this giant glass. Like, look at how much glass there is back here. Like, that is a big piece of glass. It almost reminds me of like a Plymouth Barracuda, almost. So really cool, just found this out. There's a trap door back here for extra storage space for more storage stuff. The clutch in this, it's a bit heavy. I've gotten to drive this car and the clutch doesn't engage until you're right up off of it. This car hooks up really well. I haven't drove the Stingray as of taping this. I'm actually kind of afraid to drive this thing right because that's a really high dollar car this is half as much as the state well less than half as much as the stingray but the clutch is a bit heavy and it doesn't engage until you're about right right about right there all right let's give this a start up and compare the exhaust notes The clutch is a little bit heavy, but that's kind of to be expected. It's kind of a, a muscle car from this era. Underneath the hood of the Savoy. Notice it's got cross ram intake with two dual quads on the top. It's a very intimidating looking engine. Single master cylinder back there in the back. It's very straightforward aside from the whole cross ram intake design because it's got dual fuel filters on it. And just take a look at the, how this is linked, how the linkage works. Let's talk about this engine. This is a 327 small block Chevy, but it's got fuel injection, which is a huge deal. They're, they didn't really make that many fuel injection cars. And according to the brochure back there, this is one of 177 cars with the 327 with the fuel injection this color master cylinder is there this looks like a giant single master cylinder look at the steering rack how it comes down into the box here changing a battery in this would be quite the chore because it sits way up underneath this thing 
All right, so this is usually the part where I give the pros and cons out of the complete book of collectible cars, but I've already done that. So I'm going to give you the major takeaways from both cars. We're going to start with the Savoy. Easier to push. There's more room. It costs less money. It has more power. It has that ugly duckling characteristic vibe styling going on. Max Wedge, they've only made about maybe 23 from what I found. Zero to 60, 5.3 seconds, 13.7 seconds it did the quarter mile in on paper. Now going over to the Corvette, it's beautiful. It's probably easier to live with for two people. Cockpit styled interior, no rear trunk access. 771 fuel injection cars were made in 1965. 0 to 60, 5.7 seconds. Does the quarter mile in 14.2 seconds. And if you're keeping track, that's five seconds slower than the Savoy. But according to the shutdown song, the Stingray won the race. But in reality, the Savoy would kill it. All right, on to name that tune. First person to give me the name of the song title as well as artists that perform the song correctly will have their comment pinned to the top of the comment section. Thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. I really appreciate all the support. And until next time, toodaloo!